Nation, welcome into DMVR Buffs Prime Time. We are presented by Illegal Pete's, everyone's go-to spot for burritos, buddies, and beers. Yes, it is the the new intro. Uh, you can blame Yaya for that one. <laughs> Jake's here, my guy, Uncle Neely. What's up, brother? You gonna leave me hanging now? Oh, you know what? That's payback. <laughs> that is payback. No, well, first, I didn't see you. I was, you know, I didn't looking see off set over here and <laughs> questioning things. You know, <laughs> yeah. and I didn't see you. But let's let's do over. One Boom. to twin powers activate. Let's sure. Let's let's get after it, man. Let's um, do it. We're here. If we, we're here, let's do it. We made it. Um, all the way from Boulder. All the way from Boulder. Day eighteen at camp today. And your air conditioning in your car was, I mean, it was magnifique. It was perfect temperature, not too cold. Amen. Another bite to it, you know, perfect. You're my guy, man. Yeah, I gotta I hook appreciate you up. Make sure you're treated well, of course. What happened yesterday? Day seventeen. Coach Prime uh, had a little impromptu practice. It sounded like. You know, the the biggest takeaway from yesterday's practice was because they didn't do media availability after that. Right. But the presence of Michael Irvin, man, uh, you know, by now, I hope you guys have seen his post-practice speech to the team. Just having another gold jacket there. Mm -hmm. You know, I think Shane Cokes was saying, you know, it's just surreal that you come to practice and there's another – not only is your head coach a Hall of Famer, but his guest is a Hall of Famer. You walk down the hall or you bump into a Terrell Owens or come out to practice and bump into a Michael Irvin. It's a great day to be in Boulder yesterday. Man, it's awesome. Just seeing the looks on the uh, the guys' faces out there when he's out there firing up the team, man. You can tell they're like, oh, wow, this is like a Hall – like a, they, of course, they have a Hall of Famer a head coach, yeah. but this is another one. Like, wow, this is like engaging. Like, we got to yeah. listen to every word and soak it all up, man. Yeah, he gave some words, man. He really did. Yeah, he fired – I mean, I was, I'm sitting there with the camera, and I'm like, this is some good stuff. Well, when he was talking about, you know, these are the days, man. Like, yeah. when you look back, these are what you're going to be thinking about, talking with your boys and how he's talking with Coach Prime at practice, basically. Yeah. Absolutely. So, but you know, outside of the special guest and Michael Irvin, mm -hmm. I thought the energy, you know, was higher than the day before's energy, which was higher than the day before that. Mm -hmm. So it continues to, you know, stack that foundation and, and build good days on top of good days. Love to hear it, man. I also love what he said, saying that this team has the possibility to shock a lot of people, shock the world, really. I believe that. And, it, dude, everyone that comes to practice says that. You're there every day. I mean... Is anyone expecting what we're about to see on this football field in like I, I don't think days? I don't think so because I think people, you know, take for granted the improvement of this staff, mm -hmm. uh, and that's not a slight to anyone. But again, there's only one head coach in America that has a gold jacket in college, and that's you know Deion yep. Sanders, and the staff that he's put together, you know, have a way of changing cultures, changing work ethic, changing outcomes seemingly overnight but yeah. it hadn't been since overnight right you know, it's been since mid-december yeah uh, and so i think people are going to be surprised at how well this team performs how well they face adversity how well they handle victory i, I think there's going to be ex and exceeding expectations whether you're for us or against us love to hear it man travis yesterday just had an amazing rep when he was playing defense he turned into the wide receiver basically going up mm -hmm. against zay right there yeah and we made him the headline today. It seems like he is really trying to reach another level and is close to getting there already. I don't think he's trying to reach another level. I don't think he's close to getting it. I think he's reached it and, and he's passed it, man. Like wow. uh, Much like I say about Shadur, the growth that these guys have stacked on top of what they were already doing from a year ago. Uh, you know, Travis was out there receiver today. And, uh, I mean, phenomenal back pylon. You know, and, and refs are out there now getting their mechanics in, too. You know, they're, they're preseason, if you will, right. practicing with colleges, getting ready for week zero and week one. And, I mean, was able to maintain control of the ball, get a foot in. He's a phenomenal athlete, DB or receiver. It seems like he's just locked in completely since he showed up in Boulder. I mean, when we talk to him, he can be a little short on the podium, but I, yeah. it just feels like he's so locked in, focused on this team, focused on getting better, focused on football. Um, I think that he, in particular, is going to be a guy that shocks a lot of people. Like, they don't realize this guy is going to be the best player on the field for like seven games this year. Both sides of the ball. On both sides of the ball. Yeah, both sides of the ball. It's crazy. Like, man. it's going to be rare that he comes out of the game in that regard. Uh, of course, you're looking at matchups and and game plans, you know, week to week. But he's going to definitely play uh, both sides of the ball this year, and he's going to he's going to affirm what some people know and believe yep. and he's going to change some beliefs you know you talk about him being a little short on the podium uh, it's kind of like i say about uh about shadur 
you'll be led to believe these are quiet guys. Right. You know, because they, they don't do a lot of, you know, talking off the football field. You know, you ask them a question, you get the answer. Uh, you know, other guys will kind of ad lib and extend their answers and have fun with you. Uh, but when it comes to Travis and Shadour, if all you know them is from a, a press conference or a sound bite, you would think that they're quiet guys. But, man, I'm telling you, when they're in between those lines and they're competing, you hear their voices. Oh, yeah. You know, you hear their voices loud and clear, and people respond to their voices because they know when Travis or Shadour is saying something, it means something. Well, and like, they're short on the podium, and it's whatever, man. I, I don't really care. It yeah. doesn't yeah. matter to me because we have people like you, like Darius, like Bucky, who really show us what Travis is like. And they recognize that as well. And yeah. so it's like, you know, it's not a rude thing when we say they're short on the podium, but they're just, they're not big into that talk, talk stuff. You know, you saw them at, at the media day in Las Vegas. That's just not their thing. Their right. thing is football. Yep. Love it though, man. What can you tell us about today? What was it like out there? It's getting hot. You know, I had, uh, you, get what, you get what you ask for. You get what you pray for. And I had always been thinking, and, oh, man, what, it would be nice if before we go to Texas, we get a glimpse of some some Texas midday heat in Boulder. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know if my daughter Alexis brought it with her, but this past week, <laughs> man, it has been warm. It really has, It yeah. has been warm. It's and been you hot. remember you're a mile closer to the sun, but yep. it's, it's, it's been warm out there. So it's been good mechanics. The guys are, you know, you can't wait till we get to Texas to start hydrating. So they're already listening to the dietitians, nutritionists, and strength and conditioning cl- uh, uh, staff and, and, and getting those liquids in them. When you go into the cafeteria, there are signs on the drink machines now mm-hmm. by order of Coach Prime, players, water and Gatorade only. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's no, no more apple juice and orange juice and lemonade for you. From this point on, it's Gatorade or water only for the players. Love it, man. It is uh, it is really hot out here, but sounds like we talked about it on Tuesday, man. Running backs in the running game. Feels like almost every day you're talking about one guy or just collectively as a unit, how much they're impressing. And it feels like they can be – the engine of this offense, even though we have Shador having a strong running game, and these backs can just do a lot for this team. And you know, and and speaking of that Shador concept with them, these backs can catch. Yeah, like they, they these backs are an additional receiver. Like what I'm seeing, man. Hank was strong yesterday in the day. Uh, I I don't think it'll be much longer that Alto McCaskill is still in that yellow jersey. Yep. You know, coming back from that injury, uh, I think he will tell you he's ready to go. So it's kind of yeah. still precautionary and making sure the mind and body are connected. But he looks great when he's out there as well. Can't I mean, wait, you know, he, was, he was a guy that I thought would be like a week two or three thing. Mm-hmm. He might be a week one or week two. What, what I've been seeing, mm. yeah, he, he's coming along, man. He is coming along. Smoke's back at practice too, huh? He is. He is. That, that running back room is deep with talent, man. It and, is. And different types of run style. So if you got a defense that's keying in on this one guy – Two plays later, another guy is in with a totally different dynamic to him. It's just part of Sean Lewis's offense that I love so much. I mean, it's like it's a modern offense, right? They're going to spread you out. They're going to do the RPO stuff, all that fun stuff. But when it comes down to it, it's smash mouth football. They're yeah. pulling the guards and tackles around. They're trying to get big on big and just get a hole and get guys up there for a solid gain every time. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> you wanted me to. You wanted me to, but I'm not going to do it. And shout out to Ryan. Ryan's not here. Arcade's not here, so I'm not going to do it. So I'm just I'm going to let you have that one. <laughs> look, at, he's, he, look, he's turning red. You oh know, he, God, y'all rewind man. it back and just play slowly what he just said. He he teed it up. Yes, this is a not only, like you said, smash, smash mouth offense, man. It moves fast. And one thing about these practices, it doesn't move fast enough. Yep. You know, you'll see Sean Lewis and even Coach Prime, hey, let's get to the ball, get set, let's go. Like, let's get to the next play. Don't give that defense an opportunity to get set. Yep. And, and our defense is practicing against that type of offense. So it, it bodes well for both sides, man. Uh, we had Coach Sal and uh, Shane Cooks on the podium after practice today. We'll get to them after this break. How did the defense look today? Outstanding. You know, uh, I love the teaching period. With Coach Sal, Mm -hmm. you know, being that fly on the wall, if you will, when he has his guys huddled up and he's telling them what they did wrong, what they did right in a Coach Sal way. Uh, And he's, I mean, just so much like a father figure. He can really ride them hard. And then the next time when they do it right, his catchphrase is, there it is, you know, (laughs) because he knows what it's supposed to look like and he loves when he sees it, you know, done right. So uh, they, everyone has in that room has taken an understanding and appreciation for Coach Sal's. Uh, coaching staff and really responded to how he gets them going. Love it, man. Let's talk about what Coach Sal said today. But first, a word from our friends at Volo. Volo is the largest social sports company in the U.S. 
We pay so the kids play free. DMVR crew is in the Cherry Creek Bowling League on Mondays. You can go and join us there. RK's playing pickleball. Uh, he's had to get a sub. Are you going to sub for him on pickleball maybe this week? I still don't know what the hell pickleball <laughs> is. Someone told RK told me it's a cross between tennis and ping pong or yes, something, or yeah. badminton and ping pong. Pretty much, yeah. I, I, you know. We just don't. We don't want to get a lot of ping pong in Mississippi and West <laughs> Jackson. So yeah, we had it at the Boys and Girls Club, but okay, I will sub in for pickleball for RK, but I can't be not cannot be held accountable for what the score is <laughs> unless we win. Then that's all me. But if we lose, hey, I'm the new guy. That's fair. You uh, you taking it to the players on that ping pong table in the locker room though? You know, I'm I'm more of a billiards guy. Ah. Yeah, they shoot pool. I play billiards. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sophisticated. Oh, sophisticated huh? with strategy. <laughs> you know, anybody can shoot pool. That's true. Can you play billiards? That's true, man. What's your game? Nine ball, eight ball? All of them. All of them? Yeah, I almost <laughs> said all ball, but I knew that that would get that kind of response out of you, so I did say it. Um, Volo's fall leagues are open now. You can sign up before it's too late. Get your Volo pass and start playing in leagues as free, a free agent today. And make sure to use code DMVR10. You'll get $10 off at www.volosports.com slash Denver. Then also shout out to Shador's number two. You already know what it is. Oh, Everyone man, already know knows what it is, man. There's a bottle of it right there, man. Yes, sir. Um, Shador's number two is fantastic, man. goes great on everything. Still grilling season, so make sure you get your hands on Shador's barbecue sauce before it gets too cold to get out there and grill. Go to plbse.com. Use the code ALLCITY, all caps, all one word, at checkout. And you'll get ten percent off your order of Shador's number two barbecue. You know, I was gonna push back on that when you said too cold to grill, but I had to remember where I am. Like, you know, back home it ain't ever too cold to grill because it never gets that cold. We, I mean, we put barbecue sauce, but I, I thought about it. No, I don't. I don't think you know February in, in Colorado. I'd be out barbecuing. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, grilling season's year round. But when there's snow on the ground, I ain't gonna be out there. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I was gonna push back, and I said no. <laughs> it's environmental. I get it. But Shador's number two is great in the kitchen. You know, you don't have to be outside. Yep. You can put it on some chicken breast, some drumettes, whatever you want to do. Or, like I said, you know, just take the top off, put a straw in it, go at it. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. All right. Uh, Coach Sal's on the podium today. Um, he was quick, but he shared a lot. Yeah. He spoke about um, – oh, I'm on yesterday, sorry, or two days ago. It's just a live show. Take your time. I know. Give me a minute. I apologize. Um, but he spoke about Shane Cokes, obviously, and what he's been able to do as a leader – um, he also talked about Derek McClendon, how he's been playing. Yeah. Uh, Bishop Thomas as well. And again, I, we talked about this on Tuesday, but he sounds really encouraged by where this defensive line is from top to bottom. Yeah. And they asked him about the depth today, and he wasn't worried about it. He was like, nope, shut it down right there, right away. I told you guys that not yesterday, but the day before yesterday. You like, sure that, did, man. That you wouldn't notice. I know people have been concerned that a player is transferred or, you know, how are we looking with. This many players or that many players, depth is not an issue, man. There's some talent there. And Coach Sal knows how to coach his players as a unit, and he knows how to coach his players individually. And uh, the coaching that he gives a Shane Cokes or a Bishop or a D-Mac, man, I just love to sit there and, and witness it. You know, it's, it's, it is hilariously motivating. <laughs> it is, you know? for sure, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, that's like the type of coach I always loved back in the day. Yeah. And uh, Shane Koch said it on the podium. I'm kind of all over the place right now, but Shane Koch said it too. You got to listen to what he says, You got or hear what he says, but you can't listen to the tone, basically, yeah. is what he's yeah. trying to say. Yeah, because it ain't personal. Exactly. Yeah, it's just it's his analogies, uh, his metaphors, his similes, all that stuff. He ain't talking about you personally. He's just trying to get you to see the juxtaposition of, of, the, of the lesson here, you know? So exactly. he has some very colorful ways of explaining it. Yes, he does. But I will tell you this, they don't make the same mistake twice. Right. So yep. it's, it works. Yeah, they know. <laughs> yeah, it works. He also mentioned Leonard Payne. It seems like he's really come on. Absolutely, man. I think 55, write that number down, that name. I think 55 Leonard Payne is going to be the surprise of this defensive line. I think you're going to see him be an impact player. You know, 99 and Cokes is going to do his thing. 95, uh, Bishop, I think it's, or Bishop 96. Either way, mm -hmm. you're going to see them do their thing. But, man, when I look at Leonard Payne from where he was to April to August, he gets the transformation of the offseason award for me. Like, he is locked in. When they run in gassers, you know, he is right there with the combos and the skill guys and leading the pack uh, all the way through the first one through the tenth one. Like, he, he's got an engine and a motor and a drive that doesn't let up. And I think it's guys like him and Cokes who understand, this is my shot at this thing. Yeah. You know, I am playing for a program with a head coach and Coach Prime. The attention of the world is on it. This is my year to show people what I can do. 
Love it, man. Um, he also spoke about Shane Cook specifically. He said he reminds him of Mario Edwards. Do you remember who that is? I do. It's a good analogy. Yeah. Good yeah. parallel. So at Florida State, Mario Edwards, uh, he ended up going, I think, 35th overall mm -hmm. in like the 2014 Somewhere, draft. Yeah. Oakland, yeah. yeah, he was drafted the Raiders. He was 6'3", 294. Shane Cox is about that size, basically. So for all those worrying about the size and everything that's going on, he looked big on the podium He today, is big. Man. Those <laughs> arms, <laughs> my is, goodness. He is big. He is big. And, you know, you look back at some of those uh, videos that we put out this summer, whether it was the deep pregame show or – uh, reached the people of Will Off Media when we did a weight room coverage. You know, Shane was consistently a top dog in moving the heavy around. He also spoke. He was asked about Chance Main and what happened there. Um, he said, I didn't hear that answer. I passed by, but what, what did he say? He flat out just said he just decided he didn't want to play football here. Can't help that. That was pretty much it. That's pretty Shane. much what you said, too. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> it is what it is, man. Yeah. Like it's, you, you can't celebrate the portal when you get somebody and then want to shut the portal down when you lose somebody. Yep. It's about choice. And these young people, man, they get to make that choice. And for whatever reason, it could be wrong in my eyes or right in theirs or vice versa. It's their choice to make. And, and uh, you know, I think, I think he was in a position where the switching positions presented some challenges. Sure. But like I said on, on Tuesday, man, wish him the absolute best. Yep. But I, I missed when, when, uh, when Coach Sab was talking about that part. Yeah, that was probably the most notable quote he had today. Um, he was asked about, you know, his guys having to go up against this offensive line, especially those tackles. And he said it's great to work against that length and strength. Uh, basically said it's like NFL caliber, what we're going up against here. And, I mean, we'll get to the – I want to talk about the scouts today too. We'll get to that very shortly mm -hmm. as well. Shane Cooks was next on the podium. He said since day one, um, this team has progressed a lot. A lot of growing. Trying to build that chemistry has been the biggest thing for us. Mm-hmm. And it feels like it's really – they've done a great job of microwaving that process of the team just getting to know each other, being comfortable on the field. The coaches, I feel like, have done a great job of getting everyone to settle in too. I just feel like we have a great core here right now. Yeah, and that was something Coach Prime from day one was never concerned about. Uh, when he would get questions from the media in the spring when that roster turnover was clear that it was happening and, and, and going to be the level it was – Folks saying, well, how are you going to get this roster to jail in time? Mm -hmm. And, you know, he would say publicly and privately, like, no one asked that about the NFL. Right. And every year the NFL roster turns over just about that much. And from his NFL experience, whether it was team to team when he would move to another franchise or even roster change when he was with the franchise for a few years, he knows, man, when you put the work in, you got the right coaching, a team is going to coalesce and come together. And I, and I believe that's what's happened here in Boulder. So spot on, and I think it's such an overlooked thing about this team because you mentioned NFL teams every year, crazy turnover. They bring in, in multiple free agents. They have eight or so new players in the draft that come in. Mm -hmm. No one says anything about that about <laughs> yeah. this team, yeah. man. Yeah, It's crazy. And the talent improved over that time. Yes. Like, they actually got better, Yes, and people are doubting them just because they brought in all these new yeah. people. And that's one of the things that Coach touched on when he was at the podium was that you know, this spring, there were a lot of me, 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 you know, and I'm paraphrasing here. There was a lot of guys who were, uh, you know, wanted to show what they can do individually and do those things individually. Uh, but from April to now August, these guys have become operative as a unit, which is further proof they've come together as a team that it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about what we are here doing together. And, you know, I roll this way because it frees you up. You roll that way because it frees me up. It ain't about who got the tackle or the sack. It's about that the team got the tackle or the yes, sack. Yes, yes. Uh, it sounds like this guy specifically has been having a great camp, Tajay McCoy. Shane Cooks was asked about him and the impression he's made. He said his ability to play uh, immediately as a freshman, yeah. obviously on the defensive line, kind of rare. You don't really see that in college football unless you're actually a beast, <laughs> which it sounds like he is. He also said seeing him rush off the edge and play fast and just learning this defense, he's done a great job in all those departments. Yeah, and even compared his own experience as a freshman, mm. saying, you know, when yep. I look at where I was as a freshman yep. to where he is, he, you know, he stopped short of saying he's better than I was as a freshman. Right. But that's where he was driving. <laughs> like, yep. it's unbelievable to see him. And, and what I love about him is that when he does great or, or done, does poorly, the coaches aren't coaching him like he's a freshman. Mm -hmm. You know, they're coaching him like he's a football player. Yeah. So it's not like, oh, well, you know, let him give him a pass on that. He's a new guy. Or, you know, or it, he is being coached just like he's Shane, like he's a grad transfer. Right. You know, the standard is the standard out there. And, and he's embraced it, man. You know, when you look at uh, Taji on, on, on defense or, or Dylan Edwards on 
offense, you forget that this is their first year in college. Yeah. That they were, you know, hell, they were just going to the prom a couple months ago. I know. It's insane. We watched Tajay McCoy's senior year film, and it just, the jump he made from a junior to senior, and he kind of transformed his body a little bit to change positions. He went out to the edge, had a really productive senior season. He's a guy I'm pretty excited about, and I love what I'm hearing coming out of camp. Yeah. Um, it's great, man, just having another guy in this rotation. But somebody said we didn't have depth. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. There goes that theory. Uh, Shane Cokes was asked about Coach Sal's coaching style. He said Coach Sal's communication definitely unique. He gets on everybody. You got to take the coaching and learn from it. That's when he said the, you got to listen to what he's saying, but yeah. not hear how he's saying yeah. it, basically. Yeah. Um, and then you asked him just how he takes Coach Sal's leadership and tries to translate it, try and be that other like avenue to help these guys come along and again. Yeah, I've, I've seen Shane on the practice field, in the meeting rooms, in the hallway, the cafeteria. You know, I, for lack of a better description, forgive my limited vocabulary, I want to call it a buffer, mm -hmm. uh, but it's really not that. He's just an extension of Coach Sal out there. So when Coach Sal says something to Jake, Jake, and Jake kind of takes it rough, well, here comes, you know, Shane to kind of explain and smooth over what he mm -hmm. meant and what he's trying to get out of you. You know, so don't take it that way. Take it this way. You know, and he's doing me the same way. He's not picking on you. Right. Everybody gets it, yeah. you know, because we're trying to get it. And, I, and yeah. I've seen Shane do that time and time again. I think that's just another leadership quality in the realm of communication that he brings to the table. He's just – it's apparent to me. I'm not nearly around the team as much as you are, but it's apparent to me that Shane Cooks has really emerged just as an overall leader for this mm -hmm. team, not just the defense or his position group, the whole team. Yeah, and he appreciates what that means to him that I can't let up. Mm -hmm. You know, my worst day is going to be their best day. So I have to keep this standard and add to this standard because the people I'm leading are watching too. Right. I think he's embracing that. Anything else you want to hit on from today's uh, podium? No, no, I think, I think we, man, it was, it was, you know, so I love that one, two punch of having a coach and a player, Yeah, you know, I, and the media engagement, you know, I do, I do wish that some of the media out there hint, hint to the media watching you know, don't just show up when it's Coach Prime Day. Yeah. You know, when it's his turn for the podium. Like, you're really missing some good content and good interaction uh, with these young people. They handle themselves well at the, at the podium. And uh, shout out to the media like DMVR who comes every day no matter who's scheduled. Uh, and so it's always a good core media group there. But as you know, when it's time for Coach Prime to take the podium, we got to move it inside in the standing room only. Yep. You yep. know, we need that for when the young people are speaking too. Uh, because you'll be blown away at their acumen at that microphone. Yeah, man. It's all about the kids. Yeah. And these coaches who are able to coach them so closely, and you get those stories. I love it. Thank you for saying that, by the way. Shout out to Backus and Shanker. When you get hurt, they are here to help. They've been helping Colorado families win for more than 25 years. No fees to speak with them about your case. No fees while they work on your case. And no fees unless they win your case and win money for you. They have won over a billion dollars for their clients. Check them out in Denver, Aurora, Englewood, and Fort Collins. They help with all kinds of injury cases where you weren't at fault. Car accidents, motorcycle, pedestrians, ride share, and trucks. Even if you're injured at work, smash that Shador line, 222-2222. To find out if you have a case for free, Backus and Shanker wins. Then also shout out to our friends over at Broken Tea. Broken Tea is the coolest golf course, has the best vibes out there. They've got award-winning practice facilities, 27 total holes, they also have an 18-hole championship course and a challenging par-3 course as well. Check out their restaurant, Wyatt's, at Broken Tea. Um, they've got a charity tournament on Friday, September 22nd. If y'all are interested in joining, go to BrokenTeaGolf.com to make tea times and get the latest updates. Use that code DMVR10. Again, DMVR10 for 10% off any round on their regulation course. Is that you, Morgan Freeman? Oh, no, it's Jake. I thought it was Morgan Freeman <laughs> over there again, man. Yeah, I'm not the, good at that. Oh, you're the Morgan Freeman of ad reads. Oh, I love yeah. it. Yeah. I appreciate that. All right, man. I want you to narrate my life one day. Just <laughs> I can do that. I'm sure you can. <laughs> <laughs> um, the NFL has been taking in what's going on in Boulder. You know, we, we don't get to talk about that a lot, uh, but I have been, I don't want to say surprised because I saw it happen at Jackson State with Coach Bryan. But every day there's a scout there. Mm -hmm. Every day there are multiple scouts there. Like, you know, today Green Bay and Miami were there, you know, taking notes, talking to staff, watching players. Uh, so we always talk about when a T.O. pulls up or Michael Irvin pulls up. But, you know, Buff Nation needs to understand that the NFL is pulling up as well. 
and they're watching these guys and taking notes and and having an interest in who they're going to be drafting and selecting. Like even so, you we had five guys uh, who exactly. the, the senior bowler said we yep. got our eye on for senior bowl invitation. So there's a lot of notice going on. It's not just celebrity notice, man. The the NFL scouts are are on campus every day at practice taking notes. I love it, man. That's what we talked about yesterday was the senior bowl guys, and then just you look at this roster. There's a ton of upperclassmen, mm -hmm. a ton of graduates, a ton of seniors, and even juniors who are going to be eligible to shoot. Tank made that uh, senior bowl watch list. He's yeah. a junior. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy, man, that the talent on this team, and there's so many guys who are primed to make a jump and possibly be playing on Sundays as soon as next year. I mean, it's not just the five guys that made the watch list. Yeah. It's a, quite a few guys that have an opportunity Absolutely. this season. When you look at the, uh, the preseason All-American potentials and yep. – uh, all of the various awards uh, from from punter to linebacker to quarterbacker, uh, quarterback. You, you, you look at the senior bowl, you look at the scouts that are there. You know, there's a lot of promise on this team, enough promise that people shouldn't even be remotely thinking some comparison to a 1-11 program. This is a whole new day. I mean, just the people at Coach Prime is bringing in, T.O., Michael Irvin, like, they're not... <laughs> Jake, you brought in Jake and RK. That's true. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> They see what's on the field, man. Yeah. Your eyes don't lie to you when you see Travis Hunter going up over Zay while playing corner and turning into a receiver. Like, yeah. It's just special stuff. Yeah, at some point you got to believe what you see. And I know you know, you and I have seen and, and the special guests have seen uh, and people who, who really watch the platforms, Well Off Media, Reach the People, the pregame show have seen. Uh, but the world is going to see in TCU in the subsequent weeks uh, after that. And, and this, this team has some talent individually and collectively to make some noise can't wait man only a few days away what are we nine days away eight days eight days yeah can't come soon enough i, I remember when it was 80 i know, you know and, it's, and it seemed like it was gonna be forever to get here but yep. it's it's here man we're a week away and when we get to that week you know we start doing some pre-game stuff and yes, and sir. then uh after the games doing some post-game stuff so there's you're gonna you're gonna get all you need all you need as far as inside and what's going on and uh, the good, the bad, the ugly, and it's going to be way more good and beautiful than bad and ugly. I believe it, man. Uh, we got to talk about this. Um, and you can go tell me whatever you want, as much as little as you want, ha can, I guess. Hey, and I'm, I'm not afraid to say I don't know because I don't know All everything. Right. Uh, so yesterday appears that someone else is on campus, uh, a potential new player, Jawan Mitchell, former Tennessee and Texas linebacker, and ASU. He was on ASU's camp. Uh, throughout this season, uh, preseason, while we're leading up to the actual season, dismissed from the team um, for something that happened at practice. There was a interaction or something. He got kicked out of practice. Next day, we found out he's dismissed from the team. Well, he showed up in Boulder yesterday. Mm. Uh, someone posted a picture of him getting a haircut in the locker room. So, man, speaking I of, I need to get a haircut in the <laughs> locker room. <laughs> hey, man, it's game week. We got to get ready. Yeah, exactly. I'm in that boat too, uh, but. There's another potential player that might be joining this team. He plays linebacker. Uh, he had some great plays on Tennessee's defense last year. He had a pick that I know on Twitter uh, kind of made the rounds. But another linebacker, I mean, if there, we have a lot of linebackers, I feel like. But, man, if they add this guy just even deeper, and I'll throw it to you here, anything you want to add? or Yeah, I, I really can't speak on the Jake because I, I don't know, sure. haven't, haven't met him if he is here, that kind of thing. Uh, but I will say this, you know, and I and I have said it time and time on 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 this program or joint program, if you will. Mm -hmm. You know, the one thing every coach wish they had is more of the good stuff that they got. Yep. And so, ain't nothing like another tool in the toolkit, man. Yep. I don't care how many wrenches you got. You know, if this wrench fits a different size and does a different form of leverage, I want that wrench too. For sure. So, what? What? Welcome, welcome, welcome. If he's here. Uh, he played at Butler Community College before joining Texas. He played there in 2019-2020. Had a three-sack season in 2019 with three-and-a-half tackles for a loss. He had four-and-a-half tackles for a loss in 2020. But not much really at Tennessee. He did play in 10 games last year. He had that pick I mentioned, two passes broken up. Seemed like an athletic guy on film, though. So uh, we'll wait and see if we get an official announcement from him or the yeah. school here. Good stuff. Um, You're on top of it. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Uh, the uniforms. I know we don't have much news on that, but the cleats, we saw those yesterday. Yeah. They look fresh. Yeah, you saw one of them yesterday. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's you know, we, we did a little segment with Smitty a couple months ago, 
and Coach Prime on the pregame show talking about the many variations of uh, of uniforms that can be had. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Coach Prime, he is he's fashion. He's style. He's cutting edge. Uh, you know, he tells you he doesn't follow fashion. He creates it. And it's going to be the same thing with the look when the, when the team comes out the tunnel, man, from head to toe. Uh, and Coach Prime will tell you he dresses from the floor up, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and so a lot of people dress from the top down. He goes from the floor up. So those shoes are clean, and, and they won't be the only ones. I love the little soul, too. You look good, you feel good. Yeah. You feel good, you play yeah. good. You play and good, Prime you play on the good. tongue. A lot of detail to it, so man. So good, man. I love it. Uh, there's like a billboard now advertising Coach Prime in this game on next Saturday and stuff. Yeah. It's, Man, we're so close. I can taste it, man. Man, it was so. I was watching uh, TV last weekend, and I mean, every other commercial break was promoing, uh, you know, showing Coach Prime and the team, and promoing the the TCU game. Mm-hmm. Uh, so much so, it felt like the game was like going to be here, not there. Yeah, you know that that uh, that we were the ones in the national championship last year. Like that's the kind of attention that's on this program, and I, I believe. Buff Nation is going to travel and going to be there, man. I think so, too, bro. I really think that we're going to be surprised with how many Buffs fans are in Fort Worth next yeah. Saturday. I mean, just, of course, it's Dallas-Fort Worth. Coach Prime, we know what he did out there for the Cowboys. Go Cowboys. And his recruiting impact out there. Of mm-hmm. course, his high school coaching, uh, you know, I guess pedigree or uh, history that he had yeah. out there in Texas. A lot of like, folks affiliated with the team. Yes. You know, that area's home. Uh uh, you you look at Andre Hart, who's linebacker coach. Uh, Kevin Mathis, the secondary coach, played at played at the Cowboys. You know Dallas area's been his home, so it's it's it could be a home game to some degree. I think other than Boulder, that's probably one of the best places to have the first game of the Coach Prime era here. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm telling you, I think we're going to be surprised with how much black and gold we see out there. I would love to see it, and then right after that, not getting too far ahead, but back to back home games. You yep. know, against the two historic rivals. Yes, sir. Conference rival and in-state rival. So, Can't wait, man. It's going to be an awesome 21 days. You brought a prop today. Oh, it's not a prop. Then what did you call it? I might have called it that just to, <laughs> yeah. deal, just to help you with your limited vocabulary. <laughs> what would you it's, call it? It's a hat. Well, put the hat it's on. It's a week zero hat, Let's man. See look, it. Here's my, look, here's the hat right here. Because my Show alma mater, them. Jackson State, plays week zero this year. Yes, sir. Yeah. Saturday against South Carolina State. Since in, in Atlanta. In Atlanta. Yeah, on ABC. On ABC, 5.30, prime time, man. Yeah. How hyped are you? I'm, man, looking forward to watching it, man. You know, this is, you know, uh, Coach Prime coached at Jackson State. I graduated from Jackson State. So many of the players and coaches came from that program to be here. Mm-hmm. And uh, Coach T.C. Taylor is the first branch in the coaching tree of Deion Sanders. That's true. You know, so he's the, he's the first coach – who was under Coach Prime, who's now head coach. So uh, it's week zero. We're not playing. I, yep. I can't wait to see it on ABC. Yeah, me too, man. I'm fired up. Uh, we got a whole slate. We're going to be previewing that whole slate tomorrow. I can't We have games to talk about, yeah, man. Yeah, oh, there's, man, God. week zero is here. Yes. I remember week zero didn't exist. I know. Yeah. It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you had to wait one more week for college football. How now much, you go to week zero. How much of a loser do you have to be to complain about week zero games? Just... <laughs> Now we're going to need week zero zero. Right. <laughs> Negative one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, college football is back, man. So go out there, watch it, support it, tune in. It's exciting times. Man, the chat's fired up. We got a lot of former uh, or JSU fans, people that live out there, guys that just follow Coach Prime. Um, we're all going to be watching. We're all hyped. All right, guys, get your questions in now. We will get to them very shortly. Just a shout out for us. At DMVR. Consider becoming a DMVR diehard. Tons and tons of perks that come along with it. You get 15% off your entire bill here at the DMVR bar as a DMVR member. You get a free shirt at sign up. We just put out that new primetime uh, collection. You get 20% off merch always and 20% off all events. You also get access to our Discord server. We're always chopping it up in there. Maybe a little nugget of news and stuff as well. Um, There's exclusive diehard merch. You get a diehard card. Uh, premium content, all that good stuff. Keep an eye on events happening here at the DMVR bar all through football season. We're going to have some buff stuff going on here when we're not traveling or they're traveling and we're here. Uh, we're going to have Broncos watch parties, and then before you know it, we're into Nuggets season. So, uh, yes, yeah, sports, 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 season season. It's nonstop. Man. We're, we're past that, that, that lull you know, where there's 
only baseball. And that's not a knock on baseball, but there's a window of time where there's baseball. only baseball, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, and now we're about to get into where there's football and baseball. We made it through the dark night, brother. <laughs> <laughs> then you get to where there's football, baseball, and basketball. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, and that's winning, winning, winning. Real quick, favorite sports month out of the year. Is it October? <whistles> Great question. Give me, give, me, give me a second. I'm, I'm, I'll go with October. Yep. October gets you enough of fall sport action and enough of conference and or rivalry games have taken yep. place. Uh, probably will put November after October. Uh, so it could be a toss up, but let me, yeah, I'll go with October. There's enough happening in October that, that uh, you get a little crisp in the air. It's fall. It's feeling like yep. football weather, feeling like football season. The rust is off the teams. Mm -hmm. You know, conference games have started. Yeah, yeah, give me October. Love it, man. I can't wait for you to experience fall out there in Boulder. It's beautiful. I, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, man. It's, it's been, other than this past week, it's been the summer that you guys said it would be. It's been yep. pretty mild, you mm -hmm. know. You can still wear a jacket or a hoodie or something. Yep. Uh, but the past five days, it's, it's been uh, non-Boulder-like, non-Colorado-like. <laughs> it it's been hot. hot. I've been yeah. telling you. All right, guys, smash that like button. Also, subscribe to the podcast. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all those podcast outlets. Make sure you subscribe. Hit us with a five-star review, too. We greatly appreciate it. Who's up first, Yaya? Yeah, yeah. DCB, what's up, man? Does Chef come to Fort Worth? Do you know if Chef's traveling with the team? I don't know. Great question. I'll find that out. I don't know. And we got to keep those boys uh, eating yeah. right on the road. So. Yeah, Chef has been doing it, man. Shout out to Chef. We're going to put out an uh, a end-of-fall camp segment where we show his deliveries and mm -hmm. the volume that's come in and what it costs to feed the team for fall camp. Look for that uh, next week. But, man, Chef and his staff – have done just a, a great, phenomenal job of making sure these guys got the calories and the right things. Mm -hmm. The presentation is good. The food is good. Be hard to find an uh, anti-chef person in that building. Yeah. Yeah, Chef Carl Solomon, executive chef, man. He's, he lays it out there. What have you guys had recently? Anything uh, that matches the steak in uh, the surf and turf steak? Well, you know, we had, had the lobster that day. Yeah. Uh, you're going to always have some nice, nice fish option. Nice vegetarian options. Uh, you know, one thing I, I don't show a lot because I don't have a, I have a sweet tooth, but there's always a nice little dessert station over there, man. Mm -hmm. I think it was some cheesecake last night. Lexus wore that out. Uh, <laughs> you know, so it's it's he's going to come with with something that you haven't seen in each course and each day. And keep in mind, man, that's that's three meals a day: yeah. breakfast, lunch, and dinner with the PM snack. So they they roll it out. All right, Angela's asking. Matt Rule is saying it will take him three years to rebuild Nebraska. Is this possible in the transfer era? Coach Prime is rebuilding a team in months. It is, uh, it's interesting to hear some new coaches. Kenny Dillingham says it at ASU, like, look, year one might be a little tough. It's yeah. a process. You don't hear that out here. And no, I love that. no, that's not Coach Prime's style, man. He, he doesn't delay anything. He's not going to delay cutting his grass right. Uh, <laughs> right. You know, he's, he is about success and success right now. Uh, you know, he will tell you that one of his characteristics that he can be impatient, but not impatient on the rude side. It's like it's go, go, go yep. now, now, now. Uh, and so he, he never accepted this job uh, when Rick George courted him saying, like, you know, give me one or two years to get it right. You know, he's he's planning and building this team to win now and compete now and, uh, and, and impress people now. So you you never hear him talk. Along the lines of, you know, a two year plan or three year plan. It's a right now plan. I love it, man. And this team, these fans have seen that a lot. When these new coaches come, they've obviously been bad for quite a while. These new coaches come in, they always say, Well, you know, the process, I gotta get my guys in here. You yeah. know, once we get year two recruiting, we're all aboard. It's just such a different vibe and just energy under coaching. And, and I, I think that's the the institution of coaching standard. I mean, typically when you have a new coach, it's because something went bad. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's rare that you have a new coach because things went outstanding. Uh, you know, you look at the, the position uh, where my school, my, my alma mater, Jackson State, you know, here is T.C. Taylor inheriting a program that went undefeated in conference two years in a row with conference championships. It's rare that the keys are passed over like that. Mm -hmm. You normally get them the way Coach Prime got them. Right. You know, someone left because of how bad the program was. Yep. Uh, but either way, Coach Prime's mindset is not one of, 
oh, we'll do this in year eight, we'll do this in year three. No, we're going to implement institutional changes. Uh, we're going to change people's personalities. We're going to get people who think of winning, whether they clean the building, cook the food, or coach the kids. You have to have a winning mentality if you're going to touch these kids. And that's a right now thing. That's not a year two thing. Yeah, man. And just with the rules and how they're set up, I think Coach Prime honestly did it perfectly here. Because he didn't, you can, sure, if you want to wait through year one and, you know, let the guys leave and come in or whatever. But he just did it all in the spring. Yeah. He got rid of that whole year process that a lot of coaches are going for. So in some ways, it feels like he's ahead of schedule. Sure. Compared and, you know, to and, and, and the, the transfer program. rules, you know, they can be favorable when you, when you embrace it with a first-year coach. Uh, but they're also going to be favorable when you understand that the new era in college football that ain't going nowhere no time soon – you got to do this every year. Yes. You have to re-recruit your own players. You yes. don't have to just go out, talk to mom and dads from high schoolers and work the portal. You got to talk your guys into staying. Mm -hmm. You know, so it really is NFL and free agency and the scholarships or the salary cap. Yep. And and who knows better that brand marketing and message than the Deion Sanders. Exactly. Uh, thank you for the super chat, Adrian. He says, Buff Nation, get y'all bets in. $10 can make you 800 if Travis wins the Heisman. And 1,200 if number two wins the Heisman. He's got his bets in. He's ready to go. Uh, that's awesome, man. Thanks for the super chat. PD Swag, our guy, what's up? Question for the guys. How many yards will the longest CU Buffs offensive play of the year go for? Over under 80 yards, and who gets the ball? Over 80, Dylan Edwards. That's exactly my answer, too. Yeah, over 80, Dylan Edwards. Uh, you know, you've seen it happen in the NFL, man. Uh, but there was uh, Ray Rice with... Uh, Baltimore or, or Emmitt Smith with Dallas that, you know, you're in your own 15 yard line and, and it's an inside draw that's supposed to get you maybe five. <laughs> and next thing you know, it's 95 yards later. Yep. Uh, we have those kind of offensive linemen. We have those kind of uh, speed at running back like that. That could happen. Mm -hmm. I love it, man. They're, they're going to be explosive on offense. Mm -hmm. And Dylan's the number one pick, but honestly, I feel like there's Jimmy could take it the distance. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you, you know, you're not catching a Jimmy Horn, a Travis Hunter, a uh, um, Dylan Edwards. You're not catching him from behind. Willie Gaines. Tavares Willie Gaines. You're not touching him from behind, yep. man. Uh, Big Teasy, what's up, dude? What was the vibe after the speech? I watched every angle available. I did the same thing. I yeah. watched all three of y'all. I watched the speech all the way through every yeah. time. So the the... You, you probably didn't see this on Well Off, Reach the People, or the pregame show, but there's a group of guys who went off to the side and they started building a brick wall just so they could run through it. That's what happened <laughs> after the speech. Like, I love that. Find me a wall because I'm ready to run through a wall right now for what Michael Irvin just told me. Amazing, man. And we're not even on game week. No. Just imagine who he brings in in those speeches on game week. Oh, you've been there, actually. Yeah, I was, I was about <laughs> to say, now when it comes to game day, that's going to be Coach Prime himself. Yep. Yeah, he and he brings it, man, and, and it's always something new. It's always a, a a message that hit home right then, and you want to go out there and play. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric's asking, since we've seen wide receivers like T.O. and Michael Irvin come to Colorado, do you think it is possible the likes of Jerry Rice shows up? Anything's possible. These these guys have you know personal relationships with Deion Sanders. Yeah, you know where they were either competitors, you know, became friends or teammates, and and remain friends. Uh, and so uh, Jerry Rice and Coach Prime have, you know, filmed commercials together and know each other well. So, you know, you're going to see a, a, a Nate Newton. You're going to see a Warren mm -hmm. Sapp. You're going to see a, a Jerry Rice, man. There's going to be people. I think one of the first times I came on your show, I talked about bold to get ready for the number of celebrities that yep. are going to yep. be at home games, yep. you know, and, and on the road. Uh, so specifically Jerry Rice, man, nothing would surprise me. Nope. Uh, his son is at USC, though. Yeah. So uh, maybe at this USC game when he comes to town, maybe we have a, a little Jerry Rice Coach Prime meeting. It, it, it could happen. I could happen. I'm, I'm interested in watching, you know, Shiloh and, and his son go at it. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. That'll for be sure. a moment. Yeah. That will be a moment. Uh, Owens is asking when you're moving to Colorado, but you're here. Yeah, hey, I'm here. He's late. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I've been here since um, January, but really been here since May nonstop. And you're going to be here – you're not going home until after. Football. Oh man, after the bowl game. Yeah, you like you heard me right. I heard, I did hear. Yeah, you. bowl I game. Love that. I love it. Yeah. Uh, Big TZ again. Neely, how was it on the sidelines in the scrimmage? Was there any fights on the sidelines? Uh, not. I you know I kind of worked both sidelines. Defense was on opposite, so I switched here and there. Uh, didn't see any kind of you know arguments taking place. 
Uh, one thing I do love about this team, and Nick Williams said this back during strength and conditioning, that once this team became player-led, where the players are coaching each other and communicating to each other as if the coaches would and doing things when the coaches aren't around. I saw a lot of that during this past scrimmage, the second scrimmage, and I've seen a lot of that this week during practice where you have guys coaching each other, challenging each other, where a little old lady at the grocery store may think it's something combative or argumentative, but they're really bringing the best out of each other and mm -hmm. talking about assignments and you miss this, you miss that, but encouraging each other to be in the right spot. So. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing what Coach Nick Williams wanted this team to come to. I'm seeing that player led more and more each day. Yeah. I mean, it's camp and it's football. Fights are going to just, they're inevitable. They're going to yeah. happen. It's, we already saw the big one that they had like last week, I think it was. But I feel like this team is actually, they really like each other and they don't fight too much. Yeah. Yeah. And you want that passion, man. One yeah. of the things I said, you know, to you guys, you and RK back during the spring is we went through the whole spring and never had a scuffle. Yep. You know, and that just showed you the kind of, uh, passionless environment that, mm -hmm. that was inherited. And now, you know, you're damn right. It pisses off a guy when you don't do your job. Yeah. You know, versus a guy going, well, I don't care if he did his job or not. You know, right. it's, it's, it's a different mindset now. Yep. Uh, Riley's asking, who leads the team in rushing attempts week one? I can give you my guess. Go right ahead. Because I have no idea. I think it's Ultimate McCaskill. Okay. I'm, I'm not arguing yeah, with no, you. No, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I... I Man, I'm, and the reason I have no idea is that the the run game is so balanced at practice, mm -hmm. and and you know you you kind of look for someone to outshine somebody where you can kind of think, oh, it's going to be him, going to be him, going to be him. But I'm telling you, man, this this running back room could easily be RB by committee. Yep, easily for sure. I, it, it's going to be, I think, even whoever starts, even if it is all ten. Yeah. It's like we're going to see Dylan. We're going to see Smoke. Probably going to see Hank and Charlie, too, at some point. Yeah, man. It's, it's deep and talented. Uh, oh, yeah, a lot of them. All right, we only have about 10 minutes, yeah, yeah, so let's go. Oh, when's the depth chart being released? Do you know? I have no idea, but it's 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 got to be soon. Yep. <laughs> it's got to be soon. Uh, Riley also is asking, who leads the team in tackles this year and who's second? You want me to go first again? Yeah, go right ahead. Cause it's, so, for me, let, me, let me answer it philosophically. Yes. It's beautiful for somebody to lead the team in tackling. Right. Yeah. I prefer it to be a defensive lineman versus exactly. a safety. Exactly. You know, so uh, on one hand, you know, somebody is passing the ball a lot against us in a particular game, then, you know, you're going to have a safety or a corner lead the team and lead the game in tackling. On the other hand, if they're running the ball a lot. Yep. You know, you want one of those big guys up front to be leading. So I don't know at the end of the season who's going to lead, but I, I do believe that this defensive line uh, has two goals in mind, and that is to stop the run to stop the run, and I said two things, but I had a third, disrupt the quarterback. Yeah. So, uh, And I think they're built to do that. I'll just say I think it's in between what you said. I think Levante Bentley can be a guy that just gobbles up tackles. Yeah, and he can stop. He can get up and stop a run and oh, cover. Yeah. yeah, for sure. That could happen. Um, and then I know you say you don't want to hear a safety, but with what it sounds like they're doing is having safeties play pretty low in the box. I yeah. wouldn't be surprised to see someone like Cam and so, or Trevor. And so schematically, that's not a problem. Right. Yeah, like right. you, you – when you look, and that's what I mean, you Last can't year just. It was, though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's when you're when you're losing. What was it? Twenty nine points a game. Yep. When you're losing by twenty nine points a game, and the safety is, you see why. But in this kind of defensive scheme, just because a safety is leading and tackling doesn't necessarily mean that you're getting blown out the back door. Exactly. You know, they could be coming down with run stopping. Exactly. So, uh, it's hard for me to say going into week one. You know, which unit, which which depth will lead. Right. Antoine's asking the status with Tyler Brown. Uh, we don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, vacationing with kids says, Neely, who has more wins at the end of the season, JSU or CU? You don't have to answer that if you don't want to. I have no idea. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I think, uh, I think both will have impressive winning records, but, uh, yeah. you know, they don't play each other. Not in the right. same conference, you know, not in the same region of the nation. Yep. Yeah. Not a direct competition there. Uh oh, CJ forty eight is asking for Fox Sports. Will a TCU game be a national one or regional one? National man, this is yes, on, national. This yeah. is not on Fox Sports. This is on Fox. Yeah, this is the kickoff yes. game. This is yes. so. This is the first game of the day that the nation will see. Yes. Yeah. yeah everyone's gonna be watching. Yeah. That, so it doesn't matter which channel you got, which satellite, or if your cousin is out there holding the antenna <laughs> on the roof. Like if you got a signal, you're gonna see this game for sure. Uh, Will H has a question for you. He says, uh "Oh." Uh, does do you think Coach Prime considers Fort Worth, Texas, um, 
the game at, at TCU a home game? No, I think he considers Folsom Field home games. Yeah. Yeah. But I also believe that he his philosophy, uh, what he looks for in his team, his coaches, his staff, his support staff, his media team, mm -hmm. doesn't matter if you are away or home. Yeah. You know, it, there's a standard there. So he's, he's going to travel – and play and perform and coach like it's a home game. But mm -hmm. I think geographically he realizes this is not Folsom Field. This is not a home game. Right. But I also submit to you that when it is Atlanta slash Georgia <laughs> or Dallas slash Texas. Florida. <laughs> Florida like Deion Sanders kind of home wherever he goes. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, Mr. Support friend says, of all the wide receivers plus Dylan, who do you predict will have the most receiving yards against TCU? Don't know, but I, I can tell you who – who they all look good at practice, man. Uh, Javon looks great. Zay looks great. You know, Shadur is exceptional at moving the ball around. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think that in any situation you're going to have an individual favorite uh, because Shadur's talent, his eye, the way he processes the game, he's going to the guy with the advantage whether that advantage is height, open, speed, like he's going to yep. go to the open guy. And that's the way Sean Lewis's offense is designed. I'll give you my pick. And it's a guy I don't think he'll target downfield very often. But when he you know, checks it down to Dylan Edwards and that guy takes off, I think he could have 100 yards easy. You know, that is really going to skew Dylan or Shadour's yards at some point yeah. is Dylan's yards after the catch. For sure. Because you could easily have a three-yard pass – Become a 42-yard oh, yeah. run. Uh, who's that? Oh, Eric again. Any? Um, do you know anything about the wardrobe against TCU? Uh, I do, but I'm not going to say. All right, fair yeah. enough. Uh, Sean, our guy. When are we getting Rob J back on? Also, Unc, I'll bring your gift next Wednesday. Sean's going to be here next week. Um, I don't know. We can try and get Rob J on back sometime soon. It'd be fun to get him back on. We haven't spoken yeah. to him in a minute. You know, their season starts, though. It does, yeah. Yeah, so might have missed that window. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll see if we match up by weeks. You know, I've looked because that's home. Yeah. We don't. Oh, no. <laughs> <All right>. well, <laughs> we'll see. Um, we'll get him back at some point, though. It may have to be after the season. Um, oh, I see. Lawrence, will Coach Prime walk the stadium like he did at JSU? You know, that is something that Coach Prime has done everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, whether he was in the NFL, uh, whether he was coaching in high school or coaching college at Jackson State. So I don't think that tradition will stop. Uh, and, and what the person is asking there is that Coach Prime, his pregame ritual, if you will, is to walk around the, the complete field, uh, including the visitor side or, you know, however you calculate those things. Uh, and he's either got his headphones on or, you know, uh, meditating and getting his zone on. Uh, but he normally walks that field or, I mean, I remember one time when he was coming back after, after his first injury, you know, he rode a bike around the field, yeah. you know, just getting loose. Uh, so I, I totally expect him to do it. Can't wait, man. Uh, next time you're on this show, Neely, we're probably going to be previewing TCU. No, that, that is what's going to happen. Like it's ne we get to next week, it's ball time. I can't. So we're going to be doing pregame shows where we preview the ponies week and then we come back. Sometime post game, depending if we're on the road or traveling, but it will either way, whether it's Sunday or Monday, it's still post game. Yes, sir. But we're coming back with post game analysis as well, so yep. it's going to be a good partnership. That that little logo down the corner that's blended together, that it's that's so just good. not for fluke, you know. It's no. just yeah, it means something. It's fire too, by the oh, way. I love it, man. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Well done, brother. Thank you so much. My for man, coming what down. about that fist bump there? Yes, I saw sir. you that time. Um, thank you so much for coming down, man. Can't wait to be doing tons of content with you throughout the season. Let's go, Buffs. Let's go, Buffs.